Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host, who is very sickly the most, Avery LR32 here. Destroy the boo boo stain off of that snot button. That sounds really disgusting. So that we can keep on climbing even higher, the 1200 ladder. Yes, I am very much sick. Uh, but my uh, MRI scans and all that for my VHL cancer treatment came back great. Um, so yeah, we're, we are just continuing on that trend. I'm waiting to hear back on my abdomen. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to at least get a video out there for you guys, uh, because I've just been so busy and trying to feel better. And so until I'm like totally hundred percent better, we're going to be uploading like every other day instead of every day. I just, I need this time to recover. My body is just so out of whack. I feel like I deep throated a cactus. Anyway, on that image, <laughs> let's talk about, uh, the potential for this new format post Duelist Nexus. I was doing a little bit of talking with our homie Valley D and, uh, we were talking about some of the, you know, obviously broken cards like Revolution Synchron on a Duelist Nexus. And one of the things uh, that he mentioned to me from some replays that he saw going into this new format is that not only are people playing like uh, Ancient Fairy Dragon and then getting out the Revolution Synchron from the graveyard to make the Crystal Wing to be insulated from the, the Nibiru, but if the opponent does Nibiru you and you're playing like this little Synchron engine with tuning and shit, right? then you can go for like, say, the Crimson Dragon and like a Baron and of course tag it out for like another level 10 Synchro like by Steel Dispater or like what a lot of people are doing is getting out of level 12 and then using the effect of the Crimson Dragon to summon out King Calamity. Now, what does King Calamity do? It's 4,000 attack, 3,500 defense, level 12 Dark Monster. It requires two tuners plus one non-tuner Dark Dragon Synchro Monster, but that's irrelevant since the Crimson Dragon can cheat it out because it's a Dragon Synchro. And it says, when it's Synchro Summon, you can activate this effect. For the rest of this turn, your opponent cannot activate cards. Also, your uh, cards your opponent controls cannot activate their effects. Your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to this effect's activation. If this card destroys a monster by battle and damage your opponent equal to that monster's original attack, this card in its possession is destroyed by opponent's card. You can try to level 8 or lower Dark Dragon Synchro Monster in your grave Special Summon. So this is literally a utopic or utopic Zexel for the Synchron engine base deck. This card is absolutely insane. It'll probably get banned. If not, maybe the Crimson Dragon will get banned. But the fact that this card is basically just a utopic Zexel and you can't even respond to it or an outer entity as a thought is in absolutely insane. And the fact that the Synchron deck can play stuff that I actually forgot to look up here. Cards like Reborn Tangu, which if y'all remember playing uh, Plant Synchro format back in the day, you'll remember this card. It just says that this face-up card leaves the field special summon a Tangu from your deck. It's obviously not once per turn. Combine that with cards like the Adventure Engine, then you can normal summon the Tangu and still be able to activate its effect in the graveyard. Uh, and then, like I said, since it's not once per turn, you can get out another one and still have lines. You can make the Ancient Fairy with the Revolution in hand with a Tangu on the field. Then dump a card from deck, or rather mill the top card, summon out Revolution, make Crystal Wing. Combo decks, as Valley D and I were talking about, are going to be the decks moving forward into this post-Duelist Nexus format. Where we're going to see the Adventure Engine come back into play. We're going to be seeing like a lot of based decks, aka badass sexy engine decks, again where we're going to see a lot of decks playing a bunch of different sub-engines. You know, like I saw MSTTV was messing around with ABC by steals with a Super Heavy Samurai engine, yet you can take out the Super Heavy Samurai engine and just play, like, the new tuner stuff, like Revolution Synchron and tuning and all that. So it's going to be really interesting to see all of the different combo decks that we're going to be seeing coming into this format. Now, with that being said, it's going to be much harder for decks to side deck against these decks because of the fact that there's so many different sub engines now what are some things that you can side deck against these combo decks well obviously you've got things like dark ruler you've got droplets the other thing that people are using too along with super poly is that they are summoning out the draco knight draco quest uh which if the opponent ends on baron plus uh yeah, a warrior monster. So if they end on a uh, warrior monster along with the Baron, which I've seen some combos, they end on some kind of warrior monster, uh, then you can get out Draco Bequest. Uh, this card says that it must first be fusion summoned once you're turning and target a dragon synchro monster in the graveyard. So either graveyard. Banish that target, and if you do until the end phase, this card's name becomes that monster's and replace this effect with that monster's original effects. While this card is in attack position, your opponent takes any effect damage you would have taken from their card effects instead. So the fact that you have a super poly target to help crack these synchron combo 
electric boogaloo 9000 decks is amazing and i think that that's going to be the standard moving forward that we're going to see people playing dracobi quest with super poly or at least attempting to uh, and then, of course, we're going to see people take the Adventure Engine with Tengu and Revolution Synchron and just have all the plays. Because if you can get to this King Calamity, oh my god, like, you're just winning the ball game. Like, especially since, like, the opponent just can't even respond to it. It's just nuts. Like, I think that this card will definitely get banned if this takes off. Um, what about in regards to all of these other cards? I really don't think that these other cards like Synchro Zone and all that are going to make much of an impact. Obviously, things like Assault Carrier will be good. Stardust Synchron, I think, will be pretty good. Uh, Synchro Overtop, to me, just feels like a bit just too much. Like, it feels like it's just unnecessary. Duels Genesis may see some play. On your market set, Duel may see some play. Uh, Synchro Dilemma may see some play. That's what's cool about all these cards, that there's so many of them to choose from, that it's going to be interesting to see what cards get played and which ones don't. Wheel Synchron on paper seems really good, but yet it's not because it's a level 5. So it's just like, how can you even play this card other than cheesing it out with Junk Speeder? And I know uh, even something I was talking with Valley D about was, well, you can't really play the Adventure Engine because the Griffin Rider messes up your Junk Speeder. But it really doesn't because you just get out one of each. So like you can summon out a level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4, or whichever number you're going for, and just go from there. Like you can play two of each copy. Like you're not even really worried about it. So the Griffin Rider isn't really that much of a hindrance. Uh, yeah, you also have to have the token up on the field. But, I mean, even just being able to go for three monsters is pretty good. Especially, too, like, if you're able to set up a different monster negate that's not Griffin Rider, then, like, you're still insulated from stuff like Nibiru. And, again, even if they Nibiru you, then you can still go for things like Crimson Dragon and set up King Calamity and all that. But, in regards to, like, other rogue decks and stuff, like, how is this going to help rogue? Well, pretty much any deck. Like, obviously, there's going to be decks that are better than others. But... Rogue decks can take advantage of like a generic triple tuning engine with like triple revolution synchron or whatever else it is that you decide to play. Yeah, you may get locked into synchros with things like Assault Synchron if you use its special summon effect to play to the field. Otherwise, you can just normal summon it and not be locked in. So you do have different lines that you can go for. But what you need to remember is that even when stuff is generically good, that does push the other meta decks higher than Rogue usually. That's just how it is. But in regards to side decking, generic side deck stuff like Dark Ruler, Evenly, Kurakara, even Santa Claus and Kaijus to a lesser extent, I think are going to be great moving into this new format, especially if we do see these generic things pop off, which is cool. I like seeing like generic good stuff dot decks pop off because, you know, especially if you can learn those nonlinear lines, that does give you an advantage in today's day and age of Yu-Gi-Oh. You know, you look at like something like Sprite Purely. You know, I did well at that Boca Raton Regional simply because of the fact that the lines were nonlinear and people didn't know what to expect. So, yeah, kill these combo decks with Dark Ruler, just throw them on out in the garbage. You know, obviously, if they hit the King Calamity, then you're not playing this. But that's where stuff like Lava Golem and Kaijus and all that can come in handy to a degree to where you can at least maybe give yourself some sort of reprieve. But guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'm sorry that I sound like crap. I'm doing what I can over here. We out here doing God's work to get a video on up for you. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.